In this video, we're going to cover some of the new features that came out as part of Power BI's May 2024 update, including things like the new updates that lets you open Power BI files in SharePoint and OneDrive for Business and Copilot updates. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel. We'll cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's start with this new update with the modern tooltips, which is now on by default. So it's a feature that I've been using for the past few years now, and all this time I actually didn't notice that it's been in preview, but now it seems to be kind of generally available. And this feature essentially lets you add some interactive elements to your tool tips, such as drill down or drilling through your data when you hover over a certain chart elements. And if you look at the roadmap on the dedicated blog around tool tips, it looks like they plan to add more customization options. So more interactive elements to these tool tips, for example. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what they will do with this moving forward. The next thing is the new matrix layout, which now mimics the layout that is available in Excel. Now, when you use matrix visuals in Power BI, you will have the option to choose between your layouts, compact, outline, or tabular, like how you can do in Excel. And along with that, you can also choose if you want to repeat your row headers or show blank rows between categories, which you couldn't do before. I think this is a great way to simplify the layout customization with Matrix. And it's actually great to see that it's a community-led change, which means that the Power BI team is listening to what its customers are saying. So that's a good thing to see in these updates. On object interaction is now supported on more visuals. So you can use it now on visuals such as small multiples, waterfall charts, and matrix visual charts. So like before, you simply double click or right click to format these visuals using the on object interaction modes. This lets you take advantage of some of the contextual toolbars that hover over these visual elements on the chart, which should speed up the process of your development. The pain manager is now available on the mobile reporting experience in Power BI. Now, I didn't even notice that it wasn't there, but like the default editing mode in Power BI desktop, you can now use pain manager to hide, show, or stack your panes to help you with your report editing. You can now publish reports directly into folders in the Power BI service. Now, folders were shadow dropped to workspaces in the Power BI service not so long ago, and it basically provides an easier way to organize your Power BI items. Now, when you publish reports into the service, you can choose to publish them directly into these folders that just lets you simplify and easily organize your items in your workspaces. Now, this is a preview feature that you need to enable in the settings menu so that you have this option when you publish into your Power BI services. So if you want to use it, just make sure you enable it in the settings menu. You can now ask Copilot questions about the report not just the data presented, but also the underlying model. This means that if you ask a question and the answer isn't already in the report, Copilot will actually query the model for you and return the answer to you in a visual form, like a chart or a graph. And I think this is a really cool way to use AI. How accurate the results are may obviously vary, based on how good the AI is and how well made the model is. But for simple queries, I believe this to be a really good solution. DAX query view is now in general availability. This is the new view in Power BI Desktop that lets you run DAX queries on your semantic model, which is a really handy view for things like DAX authoring, especially useful for things like querying model or modifying queries in bulk, or just general ease of usage when you're writing DAX. 
I did cover this feature and what you can do with it in a separate video. So if you want to learn more about the DAX query view, go check out my videos on it. Along with the DAX query view being on general availability, they have now also improved what Copilot can do for you in this DAX query view. Copilot in DAX query view can now write and explain DAX queries. Now, when you generate DAX query using Copilot, you can hit the run button to see the result and then decide if you want to keep this code or discard it. Whereas before you couldn't even run it, it will just generate the code for you. You can now adjust DAX queries that exist by adding additional prompts to them. Whereas previously you have to generate a whole one instead of just modifying the current one. Now a syntax checker, which returns an error if the generated query has an issue, which also gives you an option to rephrase or fix the generated query yourself. Personally, I don't understand why this would be the case. I would expect if there is an issue with the query, Copilot would just try to somehow fix it. Uh, but there we go. You'll also notice that Copilot will have some suggested topics, which can give you some inspiration on what you can use and do with Copilot. So if you don't know where to start, this is a good place to start from. Managing relationships have now been redesigned, which I feel like it's a deja vu because I covered this feature a while back. But maybe it's only because that feature was only available in the Power BI service. Now in Power BI Desktop, you have this new convenient view that shows all your relationships in one window. So this redesign is good because it allows you to do a few convenient things. So a few things like being able to filter by what type of relationship you want to see, or maybe sort your relationships by column, either the from or the two tables. The model explorer is a feature that lets you author your features like calculation groups, perspectives, cultures directly in Power BI desktop without using any third party tools. It was released in preview a few months ago, and now it's in general availability, which means that it's on by default. It's a really cool feature that gives you more control over your model. So if you want to learn more about the model explorer, I did cover it in a previous video. So go check it out if you haven't yet. You can now view Power BI reports stored in OneDrive for Business or SharePoint. So basically, if you have your Power BI files stored in one of these, if you want to preview that report normally, you would have to download that file and open up Power BI Desktop if it's installed in your computer so that you can preview the report. But now with this new update, you don't really need to do this anymore. You can simply click the file which will preview the report in your browser with a click of a button. This makes collaboration seamless with your team, especially when you're working with multiple files. It's really handy to have a quick way to just preview what that report is. So I'm gonna try to cover this in a separate video because it has a lot of limitations around it. There are some small updates to storytelling in PowerPoint, which changes the way uh, to how the public snapshot option work. There's a new notification that tells you if there are more up-to-date data that exists with an option to refresh if you want to. Lastly, Direct Lake now supports Fabric Git integration. This lets you do version control to Direct Lakes if you're using them. And that's really it for this video. So as usual, I didn't cover everything that was released in this month's updates, only the ones that was pretty interesting to me. So if you want to learn more about what has been released and what's new, I'll leave a link to the full blog post in the description box below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I'm to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you liked this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.